Folks, part two of what will likely be a three or four part video series on dealing with a difficult case of Finrot on my Beta Patriot. I do apologize, this video took a little longer to get out than I had hoped. I had a few really big work projects I had to get through at the end of July and August, but those are now finished and I am working on part three. Now these videos are longer because I filmed the whole process and I wanna disclose everything. I did some things right, I did some things wrong and made some mistakes. I'm certainly not an expert in the hobby. I simply try to share my experience and what I learned from that experience. So in the spirit of full disclosure, I did film everything. I wanna show you every treatment that I tried and what I learned from those treatments. I do again wanna thank the Beta Sushi. She is a good friend of mine, very knowledgeable about fish, especially with betas. So please check out her Instagram channel at the Beta Sushi. I really started taking her advice after what you'll see in this video. But in the spirit of disclosing everything, here is part two of dealing with a very difficult case of fin rot on my aging beta, Patriot, coming up right now. First, a quick recap of part one, and I will leave a link to part one up above in the video here. In part one, I talked about bringing Patriot home. That was on May 28th, 2018 from the local fish store where we estimated he was about a year to a year and a half old. On October 27th, 2019 is when I first saw signs of his fins receding. And at this time, he was about two and a half to three years old. Older betas are not as resilient when they get diseases. We talked about characteristics of older betas and I went through my initial treatment, which was a combination of aquarium salt and Indian almond leaves. Now, I also talked about the mistake that I made where I followed the directions on the box with the aquarium salt, but to treat disease, the directions on the box isn't enough salt and the amount of salt that you dose matters. I should have used one tablespoon per three gallons as an initial treatment. I didn't know that's what I should have used at this time. So in part two, I wanna discuss what I did next, which is go straight to the medications. Where we pick up is October 28th, 2019. This is after putting in the Indian almond leaves and the initial salt treatment, I did have to leave town for five days from my home in Los Angeles to Santa Fe, New Mexico to attend a family funeral and fly back. Now, while I was in Santa Fe, which is a beautiful place if you have not been there, by the time I flew back, the Indian almond leaf and salt treatment had been in the tank for about five days. But on November 3rd, 2019, I noticed that Patriot's fins were still receding. Now, the whole point of the treatment is to get the fins to stop receding. And on November 3rd, I figured I still had a relatively mild case of fin rot, so I wanted to try another remedy. But before doing that, I wanted to test my water. Right when I got back from Santa Fe and whenever you are treating your tank, it's a good idea to test your water frequently. It's a great idea to test your water once a week regardless, but especially when you're treating the tank, you wanna test your water often. I did test my water right when I got back. Understand as well, when you're medicating, some medications, even though they get the bad bugs, they can knock out your beneficial bacteria colony as well. So when medicating and using strong antibiotics, it is a good idea to dose beneficial bacteria daily or every other day to keep your colony nice and strong. After testing the water in the tank, it looked good. Zero on ammonia and nitrates. I didn't really expect anything to be off with the salt, but you never know. And on November 4th, I did a water change before trying the next treatment which is Seachem Paragard, and I learned a lot about this, which I would like to share. Now, my initial thought process was I have a mild case of fin rot. I'm gonna try a more mild treatment, so I decided to try Paragard and Stress Guard, but here is where I made a mistake and was about to, here as you'll see in the video. For those that haven't used either of these two products, let's talk about them for a second, starting with Seachem Paragard. Now, why did I use Seachem Paragard? At the, at the local fish store, this was what was available at the time, and I needed to do something. So I tried Paragard. Now it's considered a safe aldehyde-based product, not formaldehyde, but aldehyde. And aldehyde meaning it's made up of organic compounds versus being uh, a full-blown antibiotic. It's useful against parasitic infections, including ectoparasites like ick. It can be useful as a dewormer against flukes, gill, and body. Now, why did I use it for fin rot? Well, when you look on Seachem's website, fin rot is the third disease that they reference that Paragard might be helpful against, which is why I wanted to give it a try. So this was a first for me. Paragard is also said to be effective against flukes, gill and body flukes, ick and velvet. 
My thought process at the time was I have a mild case of Finrod. It's an aldehyde-based, fairly safe product. Let me try it. Now, with StressGuard, and I've mentioned this in other videos before, this is essentially like a neosporin. It's an antiseptic. It's almost like a liquid bandage. So it's great to use when fish have small cuts or scrapes. It helps build their slime coat and protect them, but you do not want to use StressGuard with any copper-based product or Paragard. And here comes my mistake. I did use both together. And it's very clear on the Seachem forums, do not dose Paragard and StressGuard together. I found this out the day that I did dose it, I went back and had to water change it out. But not knowing, I figured Paragard is safe. It's an aldehyde-based product. I'm going to try this because it does treat Finrod according to Seachem. And when you do dose this, you wanna use one cap for every 10 gallons. So I did dose the Paragard on November 4th, 2019. And not knowing that I shouldn't be combining Stress Guard with this, I also added Stress Guard to this. Now, in a normal situation, if you're using this for small cuts, scrapes, or wounds on your fish, you would use a cap full per 10 gallons. This is a 10 gallon tank. And just like with the Paragard, I used one cap full of Stress Guard. It was after I dosed both of these, I did a little more research on both, and that's when I found out you're not supposed to dose both of these together. Now, I don't know if Patriot was just hiding in the Anubius because he decided to hide that day in the Anubius. He does do that from time to time, but the fact that he was hiding and wasn't swimming around got me a little bit nervous. And after researching that I shouldn't combine Paragard with Stress Guard, and you don't want to combine Stress Guard with any copper-based product either, I decided to water change this out. Now, I did notice no ill effects with the Malaysian trumpet snails. They were eating a green bean there. So no ill effects with any of the fish, but after I did a little more research and read that, I water changed everything out and I wanted to start over just with the Paragard. So I did a fairly large water change there, about 50%, and started over on November 5th. I gave the tank a day to rest and I tried again with the Paragard. Again, in a normal environment, and this is more effective for parasitic issues, but in a normal environment, one capful per 10 gallons, Patriot is in a 10 gallon tank. So I started this over and dosed one capful of Paragard. Now, after dosing this, I didn't really see any ill effects with the fish either. And again, just to be clear, if you do end up dosing a copper-based product or Paragard along with Stress Guard, I didn't really see Ill any ill effects with the fish, but just know they're not intended to be dosed together. A recommendation, whenever you're treating your tank or treating your fish, always monitor your fish for signs of stress. Now, after, after treating with the Paragard, I was watching Patriot and the other fish closely. They were acting perfectly fine, completely normal, so no ill effects, but always keep a close eye on your fish. If you do notice signs of stress, you can always water change the medication out. You do wanna take the activated carbon out of your filter when you medicate, but putting the activated carbon back in after the medication is a great way to soak up any residual medication. But in this case, on November 12th, the fin rot was still progressing. The whole point of the treatment is to get the fins to stop receding, and they were not receding. So the Paragard, in this case, wasn't doing the job. The fin rot was still progressing steadily. And as you'll see later in the video, even though Paragard can get fin rot, it's best suited for parasitic issues. So on November 13th, I water changed out all of the Paragard. And I did a little trimming as well. You'll notice some of the plants I had to trim. Plants do get a little stressed when you medicate. They will grow back, but I wanted to make sure I trimmed off any bad leaves. So the bottom line here with Paragard is, even though in some cases it may be able to get fin rot, and it is a safe aldehyde-based product that won't alter the pH, so it is more of a mild solution, it may be better used for situations where you need to get rid of ectoparasites like ick, or it may be useful as a dewormer against flukes or other parasites. I've never used it personally for that, but it seems that's what it's more geared toward. And though in some cases it can get fin rot, there are certainly some better solutions out there specifically for fin rot. The second medication I tried is erythromycin from API. And I tried this on November 20th after waiting a week, letting the tank rest, I decided to try erythromycin. I have used this before for fin and tail rot, and it has been effective for me. Now, this is the same product as if you've ever seen Marison out on the market, made by Fritz. It's exactly the same product. It's erythromycin. One is from API, the other is from Fritz. Now, erythromycin is a strong, broad-spectrum antibiotic. 
It's designed to treat bacterial and fungal infections, including fin and tail rot, open wounds, mouth and body fungus. It's particularly effective with gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, but especially effective with gram-positive bacteria. If you aren't sure what those two terms mean, I will link another video where I explain both of those terms, but I have used erythromycin before in treating fin rot, and it was successful for me. So I figured, well, maybe this will get it. And following the directions on the box, I dosed a total of four doses with the erythromycin. And one question I do get on the channel a lot is, can I feed my beta while I'm medicating him? And yes, you absolutely can. It is perfectly fine to feed your beta while you are medicating and it is advised. They're already gonna be a little stressed from the medication. You don't wanna further stress them out. So yes, you can absolutely feed them. Here is during the erythromycin treatment. Patriot knows when he's getting Rapashi. He does like community, uh, Rapashi Community Plus food. And he does know to recognize that. He absolutely loves it. So again, this is during the erythromycin treatment, no ill effects, absolutely fine to feed them. They'll love you for it, of course. And Patriot ate very, very well during the treatment. At the time, he loved this Rapashi food. That was his jam. I gave it to him as a treat about once a week. Unfortunately, at the end of this treatment, the erythromycin did not work either. Here's where the fin rot was on November 12th on the left versus November 28th on the right. You can see how it is still continuing to progress even after the erythromycin treatment. So I let the tank rest for about a week and I went to my Canaplex and Jungle Fungus Cure treatment. I do have a video on this. I will link that as well. This has always been my go-to and it has helped me clear fin rot three times in the past erythromycin once, but three times in the past I've used this combination of Canaplex and Jungle Fungus Clear. I will leave the video to that up above. I didn't start with this at the very beginning because I had to order it, but Canaplex is a great broad spectrum bacterial and fungal uh, antibiotic and Jungle Fungus Clear does a great job with bacterial and fungal infections as well. They seem to work really well together, but this unfortunately didn't work either. And on December 9th, 2019, here is where we are. There was no improvement. The fins were still receding, so medication is not always the fast and easy answer. I had to give a lot more thought to the root of the problem and more consideration with Patriot's age, which the Beta Sushi helped me do. That is all coming up in part three. Hope that video was helpful to you. Please like, comment, subscribe for future content. Part three coming out soon. Thanks for watching.